Hey, brother. Then it's an odd job being a 28-year-old male who talks to the internet about Disney princesses, but somebody has to do it. Well, someone decided to do it. And I take pride in that decision. So today, we're going to try and answer a question that has been peppering my Twitter feed lately. Is Jane from Tarzan a descendant of Belle from Beauty and the Beast? <laughs> Our story today begins, as do so many things, with teapots. So many things being tea time? I don't, I, don't, I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, as we see in Tarzan, Jane happens to have a tea set that is identical to the set we see in Beauty and the Beast. At least before they turn back into humans. Do the items they used to be still exist? I'm gonna go with yes, because not only are they identical, I think this is the exact same set. Take a look at one of the cups. It even has a chip in it, just like Chip in Beauty and the Beast. I mean, what are the odds of that? And I think Jane owns this set because it's a family heirloom. And the tea set is not the only thing Belle and Jane have in common. The next most obvious thing is their fashion sense, which is obviously not genetic, but animators do often like to draw characters who are related with similar features, so it's obvious to the audience who's related. They also both share an interest in pursuing somewhat wild men and civilizing them to an extent in the process. So yeah, there actually are some similarities on the female side of things, but it doesn't end there. They both actually have really kooky fathers whose passions are both taken advantage of by a more traditional and egotistical man's man. But there is an obvious time gap between the two. Beauty and the Beast, based on the men's fashions of the day, red tailcoats, breeches, black boots, all the rage in the 1780s. And the fact that France still has a monarchy, aka pre-French Revolution, puts the timeline at about 1780. Tarzan, on the other hand, is much more modern. His wiki page says his parents crash on the island in the late 1880s, and based on how much he's grown up in the film, I think we can say like 18 to 20 years or so have passed, so that takes place in the early 1900s. Plus, to complicate things more, Belle is French and Jane is English. So how do we get those teapots from a 1780s French princess with a crazy father to a 1910 English explorer with a crazy father? Well, by way of a crazy German duke, of course. <laughs> Obviously the family link between the two. Just look at these three. There's really no denying the resemblance between them. I mean, right down to the bald spot the duke is trying to cover up. And while that's great, it leaves us with a new question. How does Belle's family get from France to Germany? Well, as I said, the timeline for Beauty and the Beast puts it at 1780, which is before the French Revolution because they still have a monarch. But the French Revolution was not far off. It starts in 1789 and ends in 1799, and it ends the French monarchy. Which, if you happen to be a royal person in France, sounds like a really bad time to be a royal person in France, and a really great time to flee the country, say, to like, I don't know, Germany? Maybe there your royal status would still be recognized, or at least earn you some favors with German nobility? Indeed, Germany sounds like a great place to have kids who then also have kids who then grow up to be the Duke of Weaseltown. Sorry, Wesselton. Although, actually, if he was really from Germany, don't you think he would pronounce it Wesselton? Yeah, probably, unless you happen to grow up in a house where your family pronounced it differently than the local Germans because your family were immigrants from France. And the mispronunciation of his hometown is not the only thing that doesn't add up about the Duke either. He claims he's the greatest business partner of Arendelle, whose top export is ice, and yet he wants Elsa, aka the Infinity Ice Machine, to be destroyed? Shouldn't he be singing her praises? Doesn't he stand to benefit greatly from this? Shouldn't he be trying to weasel money out of Elsa's powers and not, you know, get rid of them? Unless he has a reason not to trust magic. Especially magic from a blonde enchantress, like, say, the one who turned his grandfather into a monstrous beast. Ah, and another piece of the puzzle falls into place. Now, unfortunately for the Duke, he is banned from doing trade with Arendelle ever again at the end of Frozen. Not the kind of thing you want to bring back to your hometown, and possibly the kind of thing they could strip you of your nobility for? You know, ordering the assassination of the queen of your greatest business partner and severing ties with Arendelle forever. Yeah, might be time to re 
relocate, like, say, to England? England because of the second British Industrial Revolution, which would have been happening at right about that time. Just because the Duke is not necessarily a very great guy doesn't mean he's not a very good business guy. Even if he was sent away from his beloved hometown of Vesselton, I bet he still had some money to start investing and profiting from the gold mine that is any industrial revolution. And I would also suspect that if your family fell from grace like that, the next generation, as in the Duke's kids, would really recognize the value of hard work and education and want to raise their kids as more well-rounded citizens who were passionate about things other than money, like, say, a professor. A professor who would then give birth to an adventurous young daughter who would eventually bring her great, great, great grandmother's tea set from England to Africa. Man, if only those teapots could talk. Wait. Man, my question for you and everybody else is, what do you think? Could this theory be true? Could Jane be a descendant of Belle? Let me know down in the towel section below. I had a lot of fun looking into this one. Thank you guys so much for sharing it with me. If you want to read more about it, I will leave a link to the original article I found in the description box below. That's it for me. I'll see you in another life, brother. These socks are amazing. Guys, thanks for watching. As always, please leave a like on this video if you haven't already, and subscribe so you don't miss any future Disney videos. If you want to see more reasons why Jane is being snubbed out of being a princess, you can check out my video about that right here. And if you want to see my video about how Beauty and the Beast makes no sense, you can check that out right here. Bye.